You guys doing alright? <laughs> Self is up too well. Oh my god. What's that? Or using the one back in the Alright. Oh yeah. You're like, uh Yeah, it's funny. Now mark periods of time by when something's actually playing. That's a serious as well. I just watch one. Um, all right. No questions. Let's do this. Let's um, let's kind of review everything we've done. Um, factoring here, yeah. real quick review of factoring. We'll go over that thing we did at the end of the last class. Then we'll do a little bit of new stuff. Which is always good. Um, by the way, remember next Wednesday is the next test. But I'll tell you right now, I'm going to give you Thursday with next week off. I got to head out to a conference and next week. Yeah. All right. So after the test, it gives me more time to grade the test too. So. Um, yeah. So tomorrow I'll have the practice test. Next Tuesday will be the review day. So on the ninth. Hmm. Test, yeah. Um, so remember, I call this step zero. Good old GCF step zero. Because that's the first thing I always try. And if you guys have that handout I gave you, it's basically all listed there, right? Um, so that was on this quiz today. Then you look at, once you look for GCF, then you look for the number of terms. Let me do this. Four or more terms, grouping, so that was on the quiz today, that's the very last problem. Three terms, it's going to look like this here, this is the standard form. And let me do, let me do this, so we did a couple of different things based on what this was, and, and to be honest, they're really the same. Thing. It's just that it's a little more complicated. You've got to show a little more work when this is not a one. So, for example, if I had x squared plus 5x minus, uh, what you got, Jeff? 50, sure. What are you thinking? What do you have to start with? What is it that you need to answer? Well, no, no, no. This is a 1. Because that's a 1. So that means that x squared, the only way to do it is xx. So now all I need are these numbers that make it work. To be honest, you could do 1 times negative 50 and then split the middle term up. That whole process will work. It always works. But why do that whole freaking thing when really the minute you get the numbers, you're done? It's when there's a number out front that's not 1 that you're not done. Then you have to split it up. All right, so x times x is x squared. I just need two numbers that multiply to be negative 50. And it has to be 5. What would do that? Got a 10 and 5. Yeah, 10 and 5. Which one of those has got to be negative? Yeah, the, the smaller one, so it comes out positive in the end. Cool. So that's really just like a logic puzzle, like a, a number game, right? You gotta make the numbers work and you're done. Uh, let's do one, uh, an example of where the first number is not one. And then I'm gonna throw you a couple curveballs just to show you how the process doesn't change. Um, which got Jeff? I don't know. See. Ooh, I don't like that. Let me do like this. Sorry, hold on. You guys can see how this kind of gets put together.
trying to make it work, right? So here, what do I pretty much have to do? What part of this tells me what I have to do? That I didn't have to do here. Yeah, the six. There's a number out here that's not one. And to be honest, we always do this. What's one times negative 50? Negative 50. What factors of that? You know. But it's here. when that's one, there's only one way to do this. I just need to plop the numbers down. When it's not one, now there could be six and one, or two and three, or three and two, or one and six, and oh shit. So this process just makes sure everything falls into the right place. It's nice. If you're grouping, everything falls in the right place. So what's six times negative 15? Negative 90. And then factors of negative 90 that make 13. Now remember, if you're having some trouble with that, you can do it the other way around. I really want you guys to understand. There's two things that have to be true. You don't have to make either one of them true first. I really want you to understand. I need two numbers that multiply to be negative 90. I could make that happen first and then check to see if they add to be 13. Or I can make them add to be 13 first and then check to see if they make negative 90, right? So now, now what's going to have to be true about the two numbers since it multiplies to be a negative number? Yes, one has to be negative, one has to be positive, so they have to be 13 apart. Bless you. So for example, uh, 3 and 16 are 13 apart. If it, was ne if it was negative 3, that would make 13, wouldn't it, when I add them? What happens when I multiply them, though? It's only a negative 48. Yeah, so if I go to 5 and 18, that is 13 apart. When I add those, I get 13. And negative 5 times 18 is negative 9. So it's really, it's kind of weird that a little number game that you could do in my, if I can do this with my Math 88 students. And we, we sometimes we do something sort of like this. Right? But they don't factor then. But this kind of weird idea of factoring is built off of just a little number game. It's kind of crazy. Because of the patterns that we saw from when we were multiplying stuff out. So what do I do with this then? Let me bring this up here. What do I do with negative 5 and 18? What do I do with those? The big mistake I see is somebody will just write x minus 5, x plus 18. That don't make any damn sense. Because x times x is not 6x squared. That's why here you can do it because that's just a 1. Doesn't work here. Shit. So what do I do? What do I do? Break down who? 13. <coughs> Plus, because negative 5 and 18 makes 13, I can then just rewrite this as, and being smart about it, I'm going to put my negative one first, minus 5x plus 18x. So on one level, this is like, wow, Jeff, yes. That is quite something. 13 is negative 5 plus 18. Good job. Yay. But there's a ton of ways I could have said, like I had here, negative 3 and 16. I could have put down there uh, negative 4 and 17. I could have put down an infinite number of things. But this is the only one that will make the grouping work. That's why we do this stuff. Those are the only two numbers I can use that will actually make the grouping work. So what comes out of these two? X. I love it. Alright. And then what comes out of these two? Three. And you know you're on the right track because you see something that repeats, which means you can pull it out. You took it out. Makes sense because you're gonna to have to be able to do it yourself. Um, so let me throw you a couple curveballs on this one. 
We'll review the squares and cubes. Let's see. Hold on. What about this here? Ah, uh, you got it, Jeff. Sure. Uh, sure. I like it. Now oh, remind me. Uh, on that earlier one we did, um, what was that again? Yeah, this one. This one we just did a minute ago. Why did we put an x here and an x there? x times x is x squared. And of course the middle terms will now be something x, something x, something x. I really want this to make sense. So I'm going to cut this bad boy in half, whatever the hell it is. But that half better be what this is, so it all matches up. And what is half of four? Two. Thank God. If I put a three there, you couldn't factor this. It might be factorable. We couldn't factor it. We don't know how to do that yet. Uh, but thankfully, that is half of this. So, of course, what do I do with y four to distribute it? Y squared, y squared. And what numbers are going to work? Four and two. See, there's your four y squared, two y squared, six y squared. So if that wasn't y squared, that's why that would die. You couldn't do it. So if this was 10, this would have to be... No. Yes. Why? Because, so again, if I, just, if I had this instead, same problem, but it's a different problem. Yes, the more you understand what I just said, the more you understand math. That's the same as this. They're the same problem. But then students will look at me like I'm all weird. 10 8, 4, Jeff. It's the same damn problem, though. Because what do I do? Why did I put y squared, y squared there? Because the first thing I do is I cut it in half. See how that matches up with this now? So you'll get the right middle terms. So if that wasn't a 5, this thing would never have a chance to work. And look at the numbers. The numbers don't give a shit what's going on with those. 4 and 2 still work, right? Just to show you a little bit of an expansion, if the powers get higher, as long as they follow the pattern, then there's a possibility you can factor it, as long as that middle one's half the first one. Okay, maybe, maybe. Possibly, possibly, possibly. Okay. So, coming back to cubes and squares. Squares normally is something people kind of can do pretty well. Hopefully I made a big enough deal of it. I don't care how much stuff I put into it. If you realize it's a square, it should be easy. So case in point, uh, if I put down here 49M20Z12 uh, minus uh, 144A8B uh, uh, 60. Yummy. A special place in my heart for people that actually can put those together so they don't have anything to factor, but it's not a valid way around it because they ain't like terms. So, is there a GCF? No GCF. There's no number and no letters that they have in common. So then I look at how many terms there are. There are two terms, so it could only be squares or cubes. This is obviously not just because it's under this, but it's obviously squares because I can cut everything in. And the numbers are perfect squares. Yeah, are you guys understanding that? I want you to see the thought process I would have to go through to know how to attack this. Don't just start trying something and praying it. There's two terms that tells you what to try. It's not cubes. 144 is what squared? 12. 12. So now I can cut everything in half. So 49, 7, and 7. M20, M10, M10. Z12, Z6, Z6. Minus, plus, or plus, minus. 144, like we just said, is 12. A8. 
A4, B60, B30. Now, I'm almost sure that someone out there is just like, I need to put a bunch of letters and numbers and shit. But hopefully you guys see, if I cut it in half, of course they're going to make the whole again when I multiply them, because the two halves are going to come together and make the whole back again. So on a very fundamental level, this makes total sense. If I have two every other thing, I can put one of each in each, and when I multiply them, they come back together and make the whole thing that was there in the first place. See, that's 49. There's M20, Z12, because you add powers when you multiply. The middle terms are guaranteed to cancel because they're exactly the same shit, just with different signs. And the last term does the same thing as the first term just did. So let the difference of squares be easy, no matter how much stuff I throw into it. And I'm not going to throw more than this in it, to be honest. I could if I really wanted to, but I won't. Yes? So is this different than the, like, positive, the um, same sign? And then oh, yeah, totally. Because that would be for what? What's that one? The little dude, big dude? Yeah. Cubes. I think that's what you're doing. <laughs> that's where things get more difficult, because... I can't cut three up perfectly. So there's little dude gets one of each, big dude gets the other two of each. So on that level, that makes sense too. The part that's the hardest to get, but hopefully it makes sense out of it, even if you never saw the movie Pulp Fiction, but I related it to that, that middle dude is a big dude, is the cleanup dude. Kills all the shit you don't want. If you weren't here, you have no idea what the hell I just said. Something about death. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's pretty much it. That's my math. There's a lot of death in my math. <laughs> so cubes, the, the basic idea of cubes, just to really explain how I put it down on that handout I gave out. That's really the whole idea. And sometimes students completely get this, and sometimes this is not helpful at all. I want to show it just in case. So remember that first one is the same sign, same sign. So it's minus is minus, if it's plus is plus. This guy's got to be the cleanup dude. He's supposed to cancel the shit I don't want, so he has to be the opposite sign. That's a plus, that's a minus, that's a minus, that's a plus. And the last guy is always positive. Soap. So, for example, if I had uh, 8m cubed plus 125 uh, y cubed, I highly recommend you do this for yourself. 8m cubed is what, what, what? 2m, 2m, 2m. Cool. 125y cubed is? Five. 5y, 5y, 5y. And the reason that's useful, I didn't have to really do it over here because I just had to think, cut it in half. This one I want to show myself what's going on because there's one more extra piece there. I don't want to have to keep that in my head. So show myself what the hell's going on. Then I put down little dude, big dude. What goes in the poor little dude? Yeah, one of these two M's. And one of the five Y's, sure. Plus, same sign. Now, if I put one 2m there, the other two 2m's have to go here so that we'll multiply and get the whole thing back. Same idea as the difference of squares, really, except there I have one and one, here I have one and two. So 2m, 2m, 4m squared. So here's going to have to be the other two 5y's, and it's always plus. The middle sign, the middle term is going to have what sign? Oh, minus. Opposite, so it's able to cancel stuff, right? And it's always just whatever the hell's in here, multiply, right? Two m times five y is ten m y. Please don't just put two m five y. 
<laughs> Put them together, right? What's that? Cool. That just looks freaky to me. Oh my. Okay. That's the one that people kind of hate, and I, I sort of understand because you can't sink your teeth in it as much. But if you do this for yourself, you do feel like you're. You have to construct it, though. That's why people hate it. You have to construct it. You've got to remember what goes where and how to put this guy together. So I understand why people hate it the most. <laughs> yes, definitely. Okay. So that's a little review of all the forms of factoring. And then we got into one way I can use factoring to help me. Somebody sees this, they'll start to foil it out. Now, if you remember yesterday's lesson, what would you tell that person? You would say, "Don't." But well, you know, why not? I mean, that's that's the opposite. I've already done work for you. This this is already almost done. Somebody already factored this. That's what we normally have to start off with. So this is a number. This is a number. And when I multiply them, I get zero. So what's got to be true? Yeah, one of, either this number is zero, so either this number is zero, or this number is zero. There's an x value that could make this zero. I'm going to find out what that is. And then the whole thing would be zero, right? Zero times who gives a shit is zero. And if this number is zero, same thing. So I'll solve this. This is where we got tripped up a little bit, but it's, believe it or not, it's exactly this problem. It's just a little tiny equation. I say, how would you solve it? Uh, add, five. add five. Divide by two. X equals five halves. Five. Or subtract seven, divide by three. Bam. So if you plug that in, two times five halves is five, minus five is zero, times who cares is zero. Same thing happens if you plug that, it makes this zero, and then this is who cares? It's going to come out to be zero. Now, obviously, the problem is not going to start like this. They're not going to factor it for you. Some of them might, but most of them are going to start like this. I want to see if you guys see what's kind of wrong with this. Uh, let's see. If you remember yesterday's lecture, I talked about the importance of this number right here. If this was not zero, I could not do what we just did. If this was four, does either one of these have to be anything? No, they just have to multiply by four. There's an infinite number of things that do that. This number has to be zero. Because if I, if I have two numbers that multiply by zero, I know that one of them has to be zero. That's the only situation where there's something that must happen. If that was a four, I'm dead in the water. Well, there's something I could do for myself. Is that a zero? No. No. I'm like, <laughs> no, man. It's a freaking negative 26. So then what can you do? How do you make it zero? Add 26. <laughs> so then you get x squared minus 11x plus 30 equals zero. And then what can I do with this here? This is where I get somebody that does this. They'll solve for x. They'll subtract 30. They'll subtract x squared. And then they'll divide by 11, negative 11. There, I solved it. Well, that's not good. You have x's on both sides. You didn't solve anything. So don't do that. The reason we make that 0 is now that I've collected all this stuff over here, what do I do with this stuff? To make it look like that. Yeah. Then I can do exactly what we did over there. If 
I make, if I can make this a product of two things, I can make each of those products their own little easy equation. So I take a disgusting looking equation, one disgusting looking equation, and make it into two easy equations. That's the trade-off, and that's a beautiful trade-off. XX, what's going to make the 30 and 11 work? Yeah, minus 5, minus 6. Both negative, so it comes out negative. So this one you should just be able to see. What would make this zero if x was, what minus five is zero? Five. five. Six. I love it. If you can't just see them, you can write x minus five is zero or x minus six is zero. Add five, add six, you'll get there. The key thing is the minute I got a number times a number is zero, I can make each number equal to zero and solve. It's going to tell me what values make part of the zero so the whole thing would be zero. Okay. So that's essentially the principle of the five. Yeah, five or six. Okay. Yeah, cool. So here, here's the ultimate evil here. ultimate evil. Because people, I'll get somebody to do this. So if you're doing this, stop. That's bad. That's wrong. That's so wrong. And why is that wrong? What's the biggest, most important thing to make happen here? That's right. You've got to make that size zero. So, some, so the way I look at this problem is someone thought they were helping me, but they factored too freaking early. Right? They factored this side, but that side wasn't zero. It's like somebody trying to factor this before I brought that over. So, I appreciate your sentiment, but you screwed me up. So this one really sucks because you've got to kind of go backwards at first. So they factored too early. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? It's like factoring this. That would be factoring too early. I've got to undo the fact. I've got to multiply this shit out, suck the 33 over, and then try to factor it again. All right, you guys do that. I'm tired. You guys do it. specific thing, so I can't get any answers. But if I have A times B equals zero, one of them has to be zero. Either A is zero or B, I get answers now. I can actually get answers to this. Yeah? Well, no, because it's equal to 33. It's not equal to zero. I can't solve anything. So, I mean, here, if you thought A equals 8 or B equals 8, that doesn't make any sense. Right? And I can't just kind of move him out of the way and put a zero there. I mean, where is eight moving to? I have, the only place I can move something to is to the other side. So that's why we do that. It's the only way I can make that side become zero. I can't just move it out of the way for a minute. And then, come on back in. I understand. It's a very human desire. You don't want to have to do the more work. It's like already factored. What about oh, shit? We just got you.
umaga. Now, I mean, did, did, did you guys get to this step here? Yeah. All right, all right. Now, this is where things also suck because I got freaking 38 and I got freaking 6. Multiply those together, that's freaking big. All right, let me, let me try to show you. Now, after I multiply them, what am I then going to do? Try to... So, come on, guys. When I do the process, what process am I going to use here? Everybody agree I have to do 6 times negative 38? And then what do I do with that? Try to find... Factor it. Exactly, right? Okay, now watch. I try to show you every now and again these different ways of working with these numbers. You can totally do that 6 times negative 38 is 228. Is that right? Yeah. Like, negative 228 and try to start, oh my God. And that'll, that'll work. It will eventually work. You just keep trying factors that add to be 7. Or you can make things that are 7 apart and check to see if they multiply between 228, right? Like I could start with uh, 20 and 13. Are they 7 apart? Yeah. Yes. So, but 20 times negative 13 is negative 260. Too big. So then I can try to, so that whole process will work. But let me show you something. 6 times negative 38 is 6 times negative 38. Wow, Jeff. No. If I'm going to factor it very next step, why the shit would I put it together? Now, again, this is a different type of method. If you don't like it, never use it. Just do this or try to break that up, whatever you want to do. Um, what not 38 19 times 2? Let me just put the negative out there. Is that cool? Sure. You guys all with me? You guys with me? Yeah, I think we're in the same room with you, Jeff. But <laughs> now, 2 times 6 is 12, right? So isn't negative 12 times 19 has got to be the same thing that 6 times negative 38 would be? I'm just recombining the factors. And 12 and 19 are 7 apart. So that's a whole different kind of way. Instead of multiplying those, especially when they're kind of big, just leave them as they are and start breaking them apart and recombining the factors. Now, this takes some uh, being comfortable with playing with the numbers and shit like that, but if you are kind of comfortable with that, that's a whole other method to use. When the numbers are big, if the numbers are small, 24, ooh, you know, you don't have to do this yet. But, but you see what I just did? I just figured out the two numbers, right? What do I do with those two numbers? Look what I did. Oh, you put it back in the back Put it in here, yeah, so you get 6x squared, minus 12x, 19x. And then just to do this real quick, 6x will come out of here, x minus 2, 19 will come out of here, x minus 2. So then I get x minus 2, 6x plus 19 equals 0, so I get x minus 2 is 0, so I get x equals 2, or 6x plus 19 equals 0, so I get subtract 19, divide by 6, negative 19, 6. I know I did that a little quickly, but those are all steps you could do. That's why I did them quickly. Once I get this factor to equal to 0, I can set each piece equal to 0. That has to be true. One of those has to be 0. So then x has to be 2, or x has to be negative 19, 6. Okay. The problem that happens now that we've discussed this equal to 0 thing is that people try to make everything in the universe equal 0, which is really bleak. Right? So if I say factor x squared minus 4, I'll have people do this. I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> How do you know this? I don't know what the hell this equals. I really want you to understand. What does this equal? How could, why don't you know what this equals? Because x can be anything. anything. You forced it to be zero. Why the shit would you do Here's our profit function, John. I'm limiting a zero. Who did what? Get out of here. Make it big. Go away. You guys understand. So be careful about... That, I'm going to have to take points off and go too far. Really, you got this part right, and then you went too far. Shit. There's no equation. There can't be any answers then. 
There's just a simplification or a factorization of this. Right? There can't be any answers for x because there was no equation to start with. Okay. All right. Cool. Here's the new stuff. That was all reviewed, believe it or not. Here's the new stuff. This is the new stuff. Fourth one. And yes, we are going to talk about quadratic formula. Oh, shit. I'm going to attempt. Maybe I will. I know you guys will tune me out, but that'll be all right. I'm going to attempt to show you where the quadratic formula comes from. The book doesn't, which dry, kind of drives me crazy. As a student, you should never accept what I say on face value. You should be able to show me where the hell that shit comes from, Jeff. Maybe you would ask that a little bit better. Right? Um, well, let me, let me re remind you about a couple things here. Why is this equation easier to solve and that equation, for example, I'm not going to solve either one, but why would that one be easier than this one? Because this one I can get x by itself, and this one I can't. So that's why we have to develop bless you, another way to do things when the power on the x is higher than 1. If it's just 1, I can get x by itself. I can get all my x's together and solve it. This one I had to create a whole new way to do it because I can't get my x's together. But, so, so if that wasn't there, easy. My claim is this, if that wasn't there, it's also easier, because then there's only one x term. So the whole reason this is hard is there's two x terms I can't get together, they're not like terms. So let me show you what I mean. If I have this equation, the one I just had up here, but I'm going to make it the actual equation. So here's kind of the long way to do this. You would factor this. And you would get x equals negative 2 and 2, right? That's not very long at all. But I want to kind of get something else developed so I can do other problems a little bit easier, too. Uh, a whole other way to do this is to add the 4 over, right? And then take, what's the opposite of squaring something? Square root. I love it. So what do we keep doing in an equation to try a normal equation? What do we do? We try to do the opposite. If it's x plus 7 equals 5, I'm going to subtract 7. Right? I do the opposite operation. So what's happening to my x? It's being squared. Screw you, square. I'm going to square root. Now please realize, these are the same equations, right? I better get the same answer. So if you only get 2, you're wrong. And really, if you think about it, what do I square to get 4? Not just 2, I can also square okay. negative 2. So here's the thing. To develop this shortcut, whenever you put a square root down, you have to put a plus or minus. Plus or minus. Why? Because of this. Because there are two things that can square to make it equal something. What do I square to make 9? What do I square to make 9? 3 or negative 3. So when I take a square root, I've got to realize, oh shit, I'm not just getting the positive root, I'm also getting the negative root. That's the two answers I would get if I did it this way. Bang. Right, so let's see. So if I had this equation... minus as you do that. We're applying the square root where we have to realize that we need to put a plus or minus. We want both roots. So y equals, what's the square root of 121? 11. So y equals positive 11 
or negative 11. Or you, get, you could just write it as plus or minus 11. That's acceptable also. That's understood to be two different numbers, not one number with plus or minus on it. Okay. I get students that are like, where are the plus and minus keys? I'm like, oh. So what about this? Let me see what you guys think about this. Is that, you guys see that? Now real quick, if I wanted to do this the old way, still completely acceptable, I would subtract 121 over so I get it equal to zero, right? I would factor this, y minus 11, y plus 11. And then of course I would get the same answers we just got. But this is quicker. So the same reason that I had to develop a longer process when I had a higher power on my x, x squared plus x or whatever, because I couldn't get my x's together. Now, this should be easier because there is no other y piece to get together. It should also have a shortcut to it. It should have a quicker way to do it. And it, it does. Thank God. So what about this? Let's go a little bit freakier here. What about b squared equals 5? We'll overthink this. It's kind of nice that you can't do the square root because then that's the answer. You saying what would you do to both sides? Square root plus or minus. So b equals plus or minus square root five. I'm done. I don't have to. I don't have to do the square root because I can't. So in a way, that's nicer, right? I put 121 down, and some of you guys are like, 121 shit. You got to actually do it because it's doable. Five, you can't do it, so don't do it. Alright. So you guys try this one. I'm gonna throw a little bit of a curve. Let me see if you guys do this here. You ready? Here we go. just to keep somebody away from doing something. Can I add three to both sides and have it do anything for me? Can I add three to both sides? You can see why somebody would want to. Maybe somebody in here wanted to. But all this shit is stuck in there. So I need to kill this thing first. And of course, how do I kill a square? Square root. So that's the first thing I would do is square root both sides. Try this problem. Go ahead, try it. I'm never going to see this problem unless you show it to me, so make whatever mistakes you want to try. Oh, that's probably... oh you're still going. That's amazing. <laughs> 